Amber Thompson. I'm with the Small Acres Outreach Team. Uh, most people know that I've been farmers and backyards. And I work with the But I also work for a whole bunch of different other organizations. And so we all came together because we have a lot of small acres landowners in the state that we wanted to reach with educational information that we thought maybe it used to them. And there are too few of us in any one particular organization, so we decided to come together as a team to carry out this project. If you have questions at any time while I'm talking, I'm more than happy to be interrupted. So if you just pass them on to Janice, so you can give them to me if I can't hear you. So the purpose of this project is to provide practical, useful, educational information which meets the needs of a small acreage landowner. This covers a wide variety of topics, as you all know, and it's not just information for small acreage landowners. The information that we produce is actually used by a lot of people in our state of all different land ownership sizes. So back in, um, I think it was 2014, we wanted to know how many folks were out there and kind of how they were distributed across the state. And so we kind of randomly picked a uh, land size of five to 160 acres. And uh, it was a very large tract, going through all the assessor's list to kind of get a grip on how many soaks were out there. And so there are about, at that point, there are about 36 owned acres that uh, and the land that they cut to use is um, a million acres at one point. So that gives you kind of a scope of things. And so when we get together as a team, we're talking about how we can best serve the state. And what we came up with was a multi-pronged approach. So we don't just use one kind of way of buy a menu. Um, workshop shops, some electronic meetings, and so on and so forth. But the main thing about it is that when we get together and we discuss all these things, we're always changing. manner that that might be a way to get useful information out to people. So we started the Barnards and Backyards magazine. And as you can see, that's been going on for a while. And we assess it every year and basically stand back and decide, is this doing the job that we want it to do? Is it helping people out? And so far, we've decided that it is. So over the years, about 260, uh, 236,000 copies have gone out. So that's about 598 articles that were written by authors from over 47 organizations across our state. So it involves a lot of people that contribute to it. And it's a, been considered a model educational tool for other Western states. It's received quite a number of awards, but other states have taken it up and produced Kind of their own version in their own state. So that's one of the things that we do. Another thing is that we do is that we support workshops across the state. So these are have been in the past and hopefully will be more so in the future, in-person kind of events. And so those workshops have been going on for a while. And what we did is originally the team was doing the workshop themselves and then we realized that that wasn't the most efficient manner. And so now we help support others that are doing workshops around the state. And so over time, about almost 10,000 folks across the state have gone to one of our workshops. And they cover a wide range of topics. Things are in the magazine and the other things that we produce. And they're driven by local demand for information. So the local organizations in that area of the state, including yours, decide what they want their workshops to be about. And then we help support their activities. So you have some awesome stuff going on in your part of the state. So this is some of the um, different subject matter you, you can see that's been covered by different workshops. And there's a whole lot more. But you can see they're fairly diverse. So as 
I mentioned before, we try to evaluate about everything we do to see it. is it helping people out or not. So if it's not helping people out, then we should stop doing it and we should do something else. So this is some data from our workshops in 2019, and you can see kind of what people think. So these are people that have attended different workshops. You can see that I have a picture in the bottom left of your garden expo. So that originally started out, um, and it's in Lander, as you know. It started out as one of our kind of small acreage workshops, and you guys have really grown it over the years into something that's pretty amazing. And so our workshops are still part of that, but they're uh, uh, one component of a larger event now. If you have any questions at any point, please pass them on to Chance, let me know. This is um, a new effort. So when things kind of hit the fan, so to speak, in March, we were, it, that's one of our, uh, one of the times of the year where we have a lot of activities and a lot of workshops going on. And kind of ground to halt. So we were thinking amongst ourselves of how can we get this information out to folks um, when we can't meet in person at that time. And so what we decided to try was a kind of online show where folks can come and they can ask questions of our guests. And so we've been doing this. We started it, I think it was mid April last year. And we were doing it a couple times a week and then went once a week um, as we went through the season. And so basically it has two hosts. So Jeff Edwards and Jeremiah Bartman have been our hosts. And we also have an alternate host that fill in as well. And then we invite a guest speaker that's an expert on a certain subject. So it's on horses and interesting plants or type in questions for the guests or our hosts. And we basically have a good time. It's very conversational, it's very chatty. Um, it's not so much a presentation like this, it's more of a conversation back and forth. So we do that over Zoom, um, but we also stream it out to Facebook Live. And you can find the Zoom by visiting our website, which I'll go through here in a bit, or you can view us on Facebook Live if you follow our Facebook page. So Jenny? So, it went up well last year, and so we are going to do a second season this year. And it started last Friday. The first subject that we um, had for our guests was on tree care, and it was a very good show. And we try to record them and post them online afterwards for those that can't make it. Because they're on Fridays at 10 a.m. We know a lot of folks are working at that time. So we record them and we post them up. So we have other digital efforts that we do, and that includes a pretty active Facebook page. If you're new to Facebook and want to follow us, you can check it out and see if that's worth And then we also have an email. So if you want to sign up for that, you can just go to our website and we have a page where you can sign up for the email list of it. So we produce a lot of other things as well. Um, one of the things we produce periodically are kind of standalone publications. And so they're available in hard copy, but they're also available electronically on the website. So if you want to view them. And so over the years, we've produced several of these kind of publications. And one of them is this Wyoming Rural Living Resources Guide. So it has, um, basically it's meant to have a little bit on a lot of different subjects that are are kind of important when you're living on an acreage in Wyoming. And so it's great for people that are new to Wyoming, that are just getting to kind of to our lower certification and other factors in our state. But they're also good for somebody who's been doing stuff a while and wants kind of a review on different subjects. So it covers grazing, landscaping, and windbreaks, and a wide variety of topics. We have another publication that we put out that's called Plants with Altitude about regionally native plants that can be used in Wyoming landscape and maybe better adapted. We have our Living with Wildfire in Wyoming, and unfortunately this has been fairly useful over the years. It contains a lot of information and some of it's on being um, kind of helping re reduce the risk around your property 
the wildfire, and then it also has some kind of post-fire information in it as well. And the unfortunate necessity. So we also just produced a, a publication on promoting pollinators not too long ago in our state, the first one for our state. We also have a guide on irrigation. So as you might all know, irrigation and water in general can be a area where we have a fair number of conflicts. Um, so we put together this guide, which basically talks about a little bit about the um, kind of water law and the basics of irrigation at first. And then I get some things like how to irrigate, different styles of irrigation, methods of irrigation. And then it has a little bit at the end about um, some things you might think of if you admit in a conflict. And then finally, this last year, with Jeremiah Vardaman, we put out a Wyoming grape guide. So it's all about growing grapes in our state. So as I mentioned before, those are all in hard copy. You can find them at your local extension office. If you contact them, they usually have copies. And then also, also the Conservation District carries copies of various ones for publications. So I wanted to spend the rest of the time talking a little bit about our website. So all you have to do is search for Barner and Backroads Wedding, and we'll generally pop up. So this is where we house a lot of our information. There's a ton on there. There's probably thousands of um, articles, videos, and other things that might be of use to you on there at this point. So that's a great place to go and get information. And so I'm going to hop off now and stop sharing my, close out my PowerPoint for a minute, and I'm going to go ahead and go on our website. So I think maybe I lost a chance quite a while ago. No, I, I, we can hear you. I just turned off awesome. <laughs> I just turned off our video and sound because I don't think we have great internet connections, so I didn't want to lose That's you, but we, we've heard most everything you said, I think, so. Okay. That's fine. Um, I just wanted to double check and see if I could stop talking at that point. That was fun to talk to you guys. Um, so I just wanted to know, does anybody have any questions? Or are you looking for any particular kinds of information? Because I thought I would, I can share out the website and show you what's on there, but I don't want to cover things that you're not interested in. So I'll go ahead and uh, pull it up here. Jenny, just for clarification, on the the barnyards and backyards live, it's kind of like a podcast, right? And and I didn't catch exactly it's where we can find a, a whole list of all the episodes. Or, or yeah. Can get to that. Go ahead. Yeah, that's partly why I wanted to take you to the website. Okay. So the the barnyards and backyards live, it's we do it over Zoom. So it's uh, like a webinar, it's kind of like this, you get on your computer or whatever. Or if you're in, on Facebook, you can follow us on Facebook. And so what we do is we do it on Zoom, but then we stream it out to Facebook. So it'll pop up if you're following us as a Facebook Live event, and so you can join that way. Like I said, it's on Fridays at 10 a.m. So we also record them for those that can't make it. So if you go to our website, and this is it, and you click on either this one or there's another link down at the bottom, or the one that says live, it'll bring up the schedule of all our upcoming shows. And you, so you can see when you, hopefully this is big enough. Do I need to make a bigger yeah. Um, I mean, it's about as good as... You can see that our first one was on uh, tree care. Yep, we can see it. Uh, okay, I keep playing. So our um, next one coming up this week is going to be with Caitlin Newquist on soils. And so we're going to be talking about soil testing and how you can use, use that to improve your soils, whether you're doing a garden or you have a forage, you're raising forage and so on. So what does it all mean when you get the, the soil test back and how can you improve things? And that one after that is going to be on supporting backyard burn, birds. And then the next one is going to be on growing vegetables in your home garden. And for that, we're going to have a guest who used to be on the, if you've ever seen the PBS show, The Victory Garden. He was one of the hosts on that at one point. But then as you can see, we cover a wide variety of topics here. We're going to be talking about 
um, horse vaccines. We're going to talk about having a plan for your livestock. So if you end up in the face of a disaster in our part of the state, we had our great wildfires last year, which were um, quite extensive. And so folks were figuring out what to do with their um, livestock at that point. And so it's good to have a plan kind of in place before you end up in that unfortunate situation and are trying to figure out what to do. So we have other ones where we're going to talk about common gardening problems, growing grapes. Um, Chance is going to join us later in the year to talk or the spring to talk about um, breeding livestock. And so we, as you see, it's kind of a diverse set of topics, just like the magazine and the other things that we do. And so how you join is you can go to this page and you can click on this little zoom in and I'll take you right into the Zoom meeting that we're having. And it's run as a webinar, so you don't have to worry about it. Any of you, if you're shy, um, we won't see your face, but you can type in your questions as they come up, and our guests, or our host, also asks a lot of questions for that. And like I said, we also record them. So as you can see here on the first one, we recorded it, and so you can click on this page, and you will find a link to that YouTube video. We'll also put up like resources that go along with the talk. And so you can read the pretty trees article that we talked about and we had to talk about the planting trees one and so on. So that's up there as well. But like I said, we also stream it out on Facebook. So if you want to go to our Facebook page, you can just click here or you can just do a search for it. And I'll open it up. So you can go to our Facebook page. And if you follow us, you will get a notification that it is the, basically in my view, we will get the notification that the Facebook Live event has started. And once again, it's on 10 a.m. every Friday through April so far is how we've scheduled it out. So if you're interested in that, you can join us there. But we have a lot of other resources on the, the website if you're not interested in that kind of thing. So you have an interest in trees. You're thinking about a tree. You want some more trees in your place. And so we have all sorts of information on there on, on trees. And some of it has to do with the kind of trees that we have in the yard. Others are issues having to do with forestry. So we have a lot of subjects on that too. So you can pop in here and this is a section just about choosing types of trees. And so we have a lot of awesome links to various publications, including recommended trees for wild honey. So you can pull that right up, take a look at it, and there's a list in there of all the different trees you might be interested in trying. So this is just a list of everything, but there's a list of a bunch more. So we have um, that kind of information on a wide variety of topics. And we'll also link things like videos and other things that we have available in that area. So did, was anybody interested in any particular subject today that you're wondering if maybe we had some information on? Uh, uh, Jenny, where can we find a schedule of the upcoming B and B live or or upcoming sessions, like I see you you've um, listed all the past ones where you can find that, but just to yeah, just so people this can is see what's schedule. oh this is oh, I was I wasn't clear. Sorry about that, Tim. Oh, I'm this, sorry. This, no worries. So you can see if you click on that live thing, you can see them all here. Okay. So this is Friday. That's it. That's and then on into March and then on into April. So that is the new one. When I went to the recording, that's where we used some of the kind of old, older ones. And so if you're interested in watching some of these, we've kind of, um, as the show has gone along, we've gotten, or at least we think we've gotten a better at doing things as we go, as we learn as we go as well. But we have all the recordings from last season up. So if you click this archives page, you can see all the different videos on all the different shows that we had last year, and we had a lot of them. At awesome. one point, we were doing it twice a week. So there's a lot there that if you're interested, you can go and just click on the YouTube link and watch the video at your leisure. Um, I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm pretty busy and I don't have a ton of the time 
So I will open up the YouTube link. I'll show you it, actually. Let me go back. There on, uh, if you haven't used YouTube a lot, you might want to know that there is a way where you can speed it up. So depending on your style of how you like things, there's a little doohickey down here where you can change the playback speed. So if you're short on time and you're a fast listener and don't mind people talking fast, you can turn it up to, you know, a quarter faster than it normally is or twice as fast if you're a really good listener. So that's kind of handy. So I do that sometimes, especially when speakers go a little slower than I want or I'm really short of time. So does that make sense? That makes sense. Thanks. I think your audio might have cut out a little bit. Well, I'll so. Was there any other questions? Did you guys wondering if we had information on like any kind of plant problems or soils or we have a little bit on a whole bunch of stuff. We have a lot on wildfire if that's a concern for you. We've got it broken up into Basically, we, for most of these pages, we have a getting started section. So if you're new to the area and don't know where to start, you can look under there. But we have things that you can look at before a wildfire. So basically the planning part and trying to create some defensible space. And then information on if wildfire is in the area and then after wildfire, kind of recovery kind of thing. So I could pull up some of our other publications that I've shown you some of the covers on them. I don't know if any of you are interested in um, that pollinator guide that I pulled up, but basically it talks a lot about the different pollinators that we have in our state. And so it's fairly big because I don't know about you, but I like lots of pictures in my publication so that I can see things. And so this is that publication. And let me see if I can go down a little bit. I have a question. I'm going to skip down a little bit. Because I wanted to show you something that if you're interested in pollinators, the first sections talk about the different types of pollinators that we have in the state. So it talks about our different bees that we have, including bumblebees and leaf cutters, which are very important for creating the alfalfa seed that our state produces. So we have a little bit on each of those bees and their lifestyles and so on. And then it talks about um, butterflies and flies and all the other pollinators we don't really think about, including beetles. And then it gets into um, some things about improving pollinator habitat in the place. But one I really wanted to show you was that we actually have in the middle of the publication, especially if you get the hard co copy publication from the extension office or from the conservation district office, there if you have open up the middle, there'll be this section which basically can help you figure out which plants bloom where, when. So this is a little funny looking because it's not a hard copy. You have to have like both pages by each other. But basically because I'm kind of nerdy, frankly, um, I took some data on when things bloom in our area. And so then I made up like a little calendar. So if you're interested in increasing the pollinator habitat in your on your place, you can choose different plants to so that something is blooming um, for the pollinators all through the green season, or just for you to enjoy. So Jenny, that's in there, which can be fairly useful. Jenny, and then at the end of the publication, we'll get into. I'll pull it up. We talk about the different plants that I mentioned in that section. Hey Jenny. So Jenny, we have we have a, we have a question real quick. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have any off grid articles? Um, You'll have to repeat it to me. Yeah. She's asking if we have any articles about uh, just I living off of the grid, is that what you're talking? Uh, yeah. Things Oh living like off the grid? Buying a water tank without electricity or limited electricity or, you know, cooling we do. We have some articles that are, have to do with, um, we have a landowner, but getting a little old now, I would say, 
because, but we had a landowner that we featured in several of our videos that was living off the grid, that was using, um, I think it might be under here, that was, had wind and had solar. And it was, it talked a lot about um, basically what he did to make that possible at the time. So these are all different, um, different little video clips. But like I said, it's from 2009, so it's a little elderly at this point. Um, we do have a lot of, we had several different articles that were actually written by some folks out of the College of Engineering that talk about things like how to site your home to make the best use of passive solar and things like that. And so there's a couple of really good articles on there. If you want to give um, Chance your email address and you want me to send you a couple of things, I'd be happy to do that. Sure. Okay. And we do have some resources on that. Well, I'm and not I'm sure if that's what you're asking about, but that's... One of her, one of her examples was uh, thawing or keeping stock water thawed, and I, I actually wrote uh, oh, an yeah. article on that. So I think that's there's one in there. I don't know, yeah. maybe the solar thermal one. I'm not sure, but yeah, I forget. Let's see how I put it. So I don't know that I put it in this section. I think I might have stuck it under. It was either under water or under domestic animals. We have a domestic animal. You can search for them too. So if you know that, I can't remember the exact title of that one, but we can, let's go back home. So I do not, I'm sorry, I do not like our search engine. It's the universities, it's kind of weird. Sorry to say that, but it's a little annoying. But you can Google, that's actually one of the better ways of finding stuff on our, no, not the word fail. Um, so if you Google, or whatever the things you want to do. Farmyards, backyards, Wyoming, stop, and All right, you spelled your name, so. Okay. So we'll see. Ah, here it is. There we go. So it pops right up. So it's under 2016. Let's see which is it's the uh, fourth one from the bottom there. Extension educator. Yeah, there we go. Thank you, Smash. Yeah. They have a lot of stuff on the site, so sometimes I make sure that's stuff. So they basically talk about doing a DIY solar thermal stock change. So that was done by chance me and Hudson Hill, who's yet another for educators. And also with Mel Geiger, who's the your energy um, extension person. So yeah, very good question. Jane? Did you want to say anything more about that project, Chance? Oh, I, yeah, I would just say that it was a, it was a two-year project, and the idea was that if we could build a stock tank that um, would capture the heat of the sun without having to plug it into, we we did a like an economic analysis of running a, you know, a heater in a stock tank for every day for you know a couple months, and then uh, there's if Jenny, you scroll all the way down, there is a mm -hmm. uh, commercial product, that one in the middle the horse is drinking out of, um, that if you face it south, you don't have to plug it in anywhere, and you can hook it up to an automatic water and everything, and, and it'll stay thawed up to, like guaranteed up to like 20 below zero without having to plug it in or anything, but it's like $700 to buy that. Uh, I don't know what they are now, but that was back in 2016, it was 700 something bucks. So we wanted to try to duplicate that using uh, materials that you can get at the hardware store and building it cost effectively, I think we could do it for, um, uh, you know, a couple hundred bucks. Um, and we, we changed our design it was throughout the couple years to try to come up with a design that works. And we found one that worked pretty good. The problem that we ran into was durability and, you know, it was only good for a, a year or two and then you'd have to replace it with new. So, you know, it's possible to do that, but um, the article goes into more detail on how we did it. So. That's it, Jenny. I hope that answers your question. Great. It was a very interesting project. Yeah. Any other questions that you guys have out there? I don't see any. I think it was. 
So, but it's nice to know. I was just mentioning that pollinator dyes has a gift. What was that? Sorry. I was just going to say it's nice to know that. Uh, in um, the... I'm just saying the pollinator dye has different sections on different plants. Okay. All right, Jenny, I, I was just going to say, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, our internet's not very good, but I was just going to say it's really nice so to know that. Feel free to contact me if you're looking for a particular subject and you can't find it. I'm more than happy to um, help you out there. Um, We were going to try to have all these sessions live, but the internet wasn't stable enough, so that's why we're trying to record them all. This is what I was afraid of happening. reconnect with us, but I think we're winding down anyway, so um, I guess we'll go ahead and call this session a wrap. Um, is there any other questions that you guys have on any of the stuff that she covered? Um, I think, you know, all of those resources are on the UW Extension slash Barnyards and Backyards website, and um, yeah, I think it's, there's, there's, you were getting a wrap. Anyway, thanks. I think we'll uh, turn on the lights and dismiss this class. I'm not sure if there's any other questions.